Sri Vishnu Sahasranam, name 740, Lokanatha. This name Lokanath is well known in Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON. One major reason being that in all the temples of ISKCON daily, we sing at what we call Guru Puja, prayer beginning Sri Guru Charana Padma, and in that song comes the, the, the words, the phrase, Lokanath Lokera Jibon. Now, in the original translation of this, which was given by Atutananda Swami, original, I mean, in English, uh, it was translated as, you are the master of all the worlds, referring to the guru, which is not wholly incorrect. It, it, you, if we accept Srila Prabhupada as Jagat Guru, then in one sense he can be called the, the Lord and the Master of the Worlds. But originally this song composed by Srila Narottam Das Thakur refers to his guru, Lokanath Goswami who he refers to in several of his songs. So his song, Sri Guru Charana Padma, which is used generically for devotees, Gorya Vaishnavas, to sing in praise of their Paramahamsa Guru, that was originally sung specifically by Narottam Das, referring to his guru who gave him Diksha, and his main Shiksha guru was Jiva Goswami. <clears throat> but in his songs, he always refers to Lokanath. It, well, he refers to others also, but um, specifically to Lokanath Goswami. Narottam Das so much wanted to be initiated by Lokanath. His desire to be initiated by Lokanath Goswami conquered Lokanath Goswami's desire not to initiate anyone. I visited the Sripat, or the holy place connected, the birthplace connected with Lokanath Goswami in Bangladesh, district Joshua at the time. I'm not sure which district it's situated in now because the districts have been reorganized in that country. <clears throat> that was maybe 1979 or 1980. I remember we went there with, with a group. Of, must I, 1980, I think it would have been. Rashid Da was there. And uh, we were speaking with a, a local gentleman, a very nice man um, who spoke English. At that time, we were quite new in Bangladesh. We didn't speak much Bengali at the time. And he spoke English, which was quite unusual, in the, especially in the uh, out away from the big cities. Um, but one thing I remember from that, probably that place is much more developed now. One point I remember from that is that we were talking, we're going to the place of Lokanath Goswami. We spoke with him. We went there with him and we discussed so many things. And then I mentioned that this is Lokanath Goswami, not Lokanath Brahmachari. And he was surprised. He said, oh, I thought it was Lokanath Brahmachari because the name of Lokanath in Bengal is much better known in connection with Lokanath Brahmachari, who's got nothing to do with Gauriya Vaishnavism, except he had some major interaction at one point with Bijoy Krishna Goswami, who's a major figure of that era uh, then we can say in general the 19th century. Lokanath Goswami was born in the 17th century and lived to be 160 years old, something like that. Lokanath Brahmachari I'm talking about now is a big, big yogi. Uh, he traveled in many parts of the world, had all kinds of mystic powers and is still 
worship, but we have nothing to do with it. It's nothing to do with Gorya Vaishnavism. I'm just saying how the name Lokanath, if, if we say Lokanath, you'll still see in on on the back of buses in in West Bengal and his picture you'll find posted here and there. It's not only Ramakrishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. There's one side the Shaktas and the other side in Bang. The main worshipable male of the Shaktas in West Beng in Bengal is uh, Ramakrishna and of the Vaishnavas Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But then there are so many others. There's Lokanath Brahmachari and Anukul Thakur and Ram Thakur and Jagat Bandhu. So many. It's just. There's a whole uh, smorgasbord of gurus and yogis and all kinds of things going on there. So if we say Lokanath in, uh, in Bengal, mostly people think of this Lokanath. But when we, that name came no doubt from the, the old name which was there, uh, the ancient name, name of Vishnu. Uh, although the only temple... I, the only temple I know of Lokanas in India, not refer, apart from in Bengal, no doubt. I don't even remember temples. It's more like they have more like satsangs of Lokanas, Brahmachari. Um, temples there must be also. But the only temple I know of Lokanas in the whole of India is in Puri, Jagannath Puri, which is famous for the temple of Jagannath. The, the Lokanath temple there is a temple of Lord Shiva. So there we have Lokanath, Vishvanath in Varanasi is Lord Shiva. And Jagannath is Krishna. So all these names, Jagannath, Lokanath, Vishvanath, they can all refer to Lord Vishnu or to Lord Shiva. In different ways, they, it all means the same thing, Lord of the universe. But generally the name Vishwanath is associated with Shiva. The name Jagannath is associated with Vishnu. And Lokanath is associated with Shiva in with that temple in Puri and in here in Vishnu Sahasranam. Uh, and of course, another way that Lokanath, the name is uh, well known in ISKCON is because of the very well known and loved Lokanas Swami of uh, ISKCON. Now, Lokanasa, Lokanasa means Loka means planets, worlds. Uh, it means the, in this sense, the universe. Natha is a well-known word, which means master or lord. And so the obvious connotation of the name Lokanath is the lord of the universe. However, as in the previous name, Lokabandhu, which you would take to mean means the friend of all the worlds, but is in the commentaries on Vishnu Sahasranam is that most of the commentaries give a, a, a different interpretation. Uh, they don't deny Loka Bandhu, meaning the friend of the worlds, but um, similarly here in Loka Band, Loka Nata, the obvious connotation that comes to mind when we, because we know the word Loka, we know the word Nata, so it means master of the worlds. But as with the previous name, it's not. The, the commentaries, they don't primarily give the understanding based on what we would think to be the most obvious understanding. Uh, Loka means the world. It also gives the idea of to see, to perceive, uh, depending on which Sanskrit root we go to, can mean uh, to shine, to know, to seek. It can also be understood as to ask, to harass, and also to be the master of. So there are various roots. And 
loka signifying the world, and the word nath is interpreted in various ways. One who is sought by the people of the world, or one who seeks. This is this is the uh, interpretation given. There, there, there are various ones. We'll go through them. <clears throat> One who is sought by the people of the world for his blessings. That was discussed in the previous name, Lokabandhu, that people seek him for, for, the, for the blessings. The Arto Jignasa Artarti, they seek him. So in that, that sense, the Lokabandhu, if we take that meaning of Lokabandhu, that overlaps with this meaning of Lokanatha. And the one who seeks, he's looking for his devotees. Mm. He's looking for, for everyone. Maya Amrigam Dayatepsita Anvadhavad is in the 11th canto of Bhagavatam. He's, he's running after the Conditioned so this refers to Lord Chaitanya. He's running after the conditioned souls who are bewildered by Maya. They're just like like toy play animals in the hands of Maya. So out of mercy on them, he's running after them. So that's one meaning. The protector of the world. It's very similar to Loka Bandhu. Uh, in a, the friend of the world, he's the friend. He protects. Uh, it's natural for him because the relationship between him and the jivas is eternal. It's an eternal relationship of mastership and dependency. And from Krishna's perspective, because he's all good, his mastership doesn't mean to dominate in, the, in a way of being uh, squeezing people, exploiting them, but his mastership is caring for them. So it's a very natural for him to want to protect all living beings. Uh, he's naturally at, we, if we just give up our nonsense identification with everything which has got nothing to do with Krishna, if we would just realize that or just accept that we have an, a natural, eternal, spontaneous relationship with him. It's natural for us to be attached to him in love, and it's natural for him to be attached to us in love. The problem is that we're in Maya, but he's not in Maya. So even though we're not attached to him, he's attached to us, and he's always protecting us and looking out for us. Uh, Quote, there's a quote here from the Divya Prabandham that the Supreme Lord in the Divya Deshams, the holy places manifested in this world as recognized by the Sri Sampradaya. There are 108 Divya Deshams, many of, mostly in South India, most in what we nowadays identify or is designated as Tamil Nadu and others in Andhra Pradesh, other places of South India, Karnataka, Kerala, and we also have in North India and Nepal a few, and ultimately Vaikuntha. So these are, and he resides there with his dear wife. Just, why does he do that? Why does he come to these places? Just to oh, just to be in this world and oversee it, with the aim that sarve sukhino bhavantu. This is the Vedic message. Let everyone be happy. That we are supposed to imbibe. But the, the Supreme Lord Himself has that feeling. Everything He does, He comes to this world. It's all for that motive. Let everyone be happy. I'm going to quote from Srila Prabhupada from a lecture that he gave in Mayapur in 1973, June the 20th. 
in this regard. Srila Prabhupada said, Krishna is giving us a chance, this human form of life. I give you all facilities, all the supplies, necessities of your life. The river will serve you, the hills will serve, the mountains will serve you, the ocean will serve you, the forest will serve you, the vegetables will serve, the animals will serve you, everyone will serve you. Now you have got the human form of life, you take service from them, live peacefully and chant Hare Krishna. This is the arrangement. So Srila Prabhupada is saying here that Krishna has arranged that man can take advantage of all these facilities. We can use them all and, and live peacefully and chant Hare Krishna. But, Srila Prabhupada continued, but these rascals, they'll not chant Hare Krishna. They want to predominate over these hills, mountains, rivers, animals. In the Bible it is said that the animals are given under the control of the human being, man. Is it not? They have taken it that because the animals are under the control of man, therefore man should open slaughterhouses and eat them. Suppose if somebody gives his son, Swamiji, will you take my son, keep him under your control? Does it mean I shall eat him? Very gross example given by Srila Prabhupada. The, the point is there. These rascals interpret it in that way. Because the animals are given under the control of man, therefore there should be a slaughterhouse and the animals will be killed and they will eat. So Krishna provides everything, but we are misusing it. We don't recognize that he is Lokanas. We want to make ourselves the boss. Ishvaro hum, aham bhogi. We want to show ourselves as being in charge. Everything belongs to me. I am the enjoyer. I am the lord of all I survey. Hmm. Another understanding of this name, Lokanatha, he who bestows opulence on all as a result of his unlimited opulence. He, he can give you as much as he can give you as 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 much as we can imagine. But as much as we can imagine is is still a, a tiny fraction of what he has. So he can just as we read Srila Prabhupada's quote just now, he gives us you take you take all the facilities. You take, hmm. in that way, he who bestows, he bestows on the universe, he bestows auspiciousness, he bestows opulence. Shankaracharya gives four explanations of the name, including the one just given. Another one, he, he who is sought after or prayed by all. And other commentators also give this, that materialistic people pray to him for dharma, artha, karma, and moksha. So that is, uh, yeah, again, that's similar to that point. Many of these points, they're, they're just nuances of the, of the same point. Similarly from the Madhav Sampradaya, we have lokanam ishta, Iti lokanataha. He, ishta, means desired. He who is desired or coveted by all the worlds. Everyone is looking for Krishna. Some people recognize it, some people don't. Then another meaning, he who shines in the world or who regulates the world by energizing it. Lokan upat, upatapati. <clears throat> um, here we have Madhav Sampradaya. Luk prakashan iti dhataho loko jnana rupo natyate iti lokanatha. He's the brightest person and gives light, the light of knowledge to the worlds. That who regulates the world by energizing it, that's not exactly explained, but 
uh, not well, not explained here, but we can understand that all the energies of the world, which the scientists are <coughs> discovering, all the various energies, the, the thermodynamics, radioactive waves, and X-rays and uh, N-rays, whoops, N-rays, N-rays. Mm, well, that was discovered and undiscovered. But anyway, they discover so many things. These energies interact with each other and the world goes on and the scientists look at it all and say, hmm, yeah, we have discovered there's no God, but it's God who gives these energies that makes the world work as it is. <coughs> He also gives them the energy to get enthusiasm to study all these things. All energy comes from Krishna. He is the, he is the supreme energetic <clears throat> source of all energy. He who, another meaning, he who comforts or blesses the world. <clears throat> yeah, it's good to know that Krishna is there, isn't it? It's a great comfort. When we, when we, all the time, we're struggling through this world, we can always remember there's so many difficulties. <clears throat> we all have so many difficulties. And it's just the nature of people that even if we don't have great difficulties, we take our little difficulties to be great difficulties. Small thing goes wrong and we get so upset. And it's it's like that in Kali Yuga especially because Upadruta, the mind is always disturbed. The mind is naturally, the mind of people in Kali Yuga is naturally always disturbed and there are so many disturbances that everyone's busy disturbing everyone else in so many ways, and we make so many things for material advancement which disturb us more and more in so many ways. Oh, it's good to remember. It's Krishna, Krishna. We don't belong here. It's just some period of punishment we have to go through. We will reach it. We pray to reach it. We will, we will. We have that confidence and faith. Unqualified as we are, we will reach him. So he comforts. He also comforts foolish people with foolish uh, comforts. We can take comfort in uh, prostitutes. I do declare there, was, there were times when I was so lonesome, I took some comfort there. And we can take comfort in teddy bears and uh, comfort in wrapping our, in the cold weather, wrapping ourselves up in warm clothes, uh, forgetting Krishna. Bhulia tomare shongshari ashiya peye nana bidda betha. Forgetting you, Krishna, I came to this material world and I experienced so many types of pain. So the cause is forgetting Krishna. Just remember Krishna. We are comforted. Otherwise we seek shelter in flimsy comforts. Uh, then an another meaning is given, he who rules over the world, which seems the most obvious meaning, but it's it comes as one of the... the as one of the later given meanings. In the uh, Madhva Sampradaya, they quote from Aditya Purana, Deva Sharma, a devotee of Sri Vayudev, extolling Lord Srinivas as follows. Prapadye Pundari Ka Aksham Ishang Bhakti Tanu Kampinam Loko Tarang Lokana Tam Purat Paratarang Vibhum. Uh, he says, I surrender to you, O Lotus Eyes, O Lotus Eyed Lord, who are very kind 
to the devotees. You are above all others. You are the master of all. You rule over all. Uh, you are the all-powerful who is above those who are above others. Now, another meaning. Remember that saying about haras. Another meaning of nata is haras. Now, it seems to be almost expected that the leaders of people in this world, in this age, will harass them. That is almost expected. But it's not expected of the Supreme Lord. But he does also, in his role as the master, one of the meanings, uh, upa, upatapati it's given. One who gives, yeah, gives difficulty to others. Well, this is particularly, he gives trouble to those who need to be disciplined for their own good because he wants that all the living beings who are part and parcel of him come to him. He doesn't want them to suffer, but he gives them independence. So he, so he also gives them various troubles so they can come to their senses and realize that misuse of independence is not in my best interest. Transgressing the laws of dharma, transgressing the laws of God as giving in Shastra will bring its punishment. But that is meant to bring us back to the proper way of life. Those who follow dharma, which ultimately means to surrender to Krishna, sarvadhaman paritya mamaya kam sharam raja, giving up all inferior concepts of dharma, fully taking shelter in Krishna only, uh, they will always live in peace. And others, they will be reciprocated with by Krishna, who is Lokanata, who will give them various troubles in the same way that a parent may punish a child to rectify the child. Baladei Vidya Bhushan says that he is the Lord of the worlds, Lord of, uh, Lord of the devotees. Uh, here he takes he takes Nata to mean Lord and Loka to mean devotees. Loka can mean people also. So when we speak of people in relation with Vishnu, that particularly means his devotees. And then Baladev Vidya Bhushan say that, says that, well, others, opponents, Purva Pakshins, those in another party, a, a, opposing party, they will say, no, Rudra, Shiva, he is Lokeshvara, Lord of the world. How would they consider only Vishnu as Lokeshvara? And the answer that he'll give in the next, in his exposition of the next name, Baladev Vidya Bhushan will give, is that the next name... Uh, we have coming up Madhava, and then we have Bhaktavatsala. Uh, <clears throat> so Madhava means the husband of the goddess of fortune, and Bhaktavatsala means he's very aff affectionate to his devotees. And we'll find there that Baladev Vidya Bhushan says, you see that Sh Shiva, he gives boons to his devotees which causes harm to them to the very devotees themselves but Vishnu will never do that to his devotees uh, one answer we can give how is it we consider Vishnu to be Lokanath and not interpret it here at least in Vishnu's Asranam as Shiva because okay Shiva is the lord of the world but Krishna is the Lord of all the lords of the world. We can say Shiva is the Lord of the world. We can say Brahma is the Lord of the world. Indra is the Lord of the world. To me, Sarveshvareshvara, Brajendra Kuma. Krishna is the master of the masters of all the worlds. So, knowing this, we should become 
intelligent understand this by knowing who is Lokanas. We're so busy studying this world through science, geography, history, sociology, psychology. I was just thinking it's psychology. Just okay. And all this psychology, it's all a lot of it seems to be culture specific. I wonder if all the things they say about psychology and this it's it's just based on cultural assumptions. If they went and studied uh say Chinese people who are brought up in a different culture to America. I wonder if the psychology will work in the same way. I don't, I don't. Anyway, we're studying so many things, but studying this world without relation to Krishna means we're missing the whole point. We tend to give credit to people who have beauty, knowledge, wealth, fame, strength, renunciation. We're just mentioning Lokanath Brahmachari. Definitely had renunciation. Very, very, very renounced yogi. Uh, probably stopped eating and sleeping. But people who have all these apparent qualities in relation to Krishna, it's it's What's the point? Why should we become enamored by that? We should understand that these, all the great qualities, they are in Krishna, from Krishna, whatever anyone in the world may have is ultimately a gift from Krishna. So we're studying Vishnu Sahasranam one reason is just to understand more deeply, become more convinced why we should worship Krishna. Krishna should be the center, central object of our worship. We can, we can give credit to people for their wealth, strength, knowledge, beauty, fame, renunciation, and so on. We may do so. But it's only a... We should understand it's only a fragmental portion, just a, a, just a tiny little gift, which to us, because we're in such a small, small-minded and with such small experience, frogs in the well of our own experience, what we consider to be civilization. We think that someone, oh, is so wealthy, so beautiful, so knowledgeable, but it's just a tiny fragment that's coming from Krishna. He's the source of all qualities, all opulences, and really he's the one who we should direct our adoration toward. Our thoughts should dwell in him. We can be completely satisfied only by thinking of him, surrendering of our, our lives to him, and speaking about him. There are so many people we can praise in the world. But who's going to give a thousand lectures on anyone of this world, however much you may praise them? Of course, if they're a devotee of Krishna, then they share in the opulence of Krishna and should be glorified. As, just like we say about Srila Prabhupada, his, his glories are unlimited. That's because he shares in the unlimited opulence of Krishna. But if we want to glorify someone of this, who's someone? Who's someone we can praise in the world? Who's, who's the big shot? Oh, the new American president, Joe Biden. Okay, you can praise him. He's, he's got at the fag end of his life, he's got the position of the president of the United States of America, so he's got some power and some fame. But... You're going to give a thousand talks about him? Well, I'm not sure. I don't think I gave a thousand talks on Vishnu Sahasranam, but I'm aiming at it. And we can unlimited, there's unlimitedly we can glorify Krishna. Just see, is there anyone in this world 
Albert Einstein. Are we going to spend a thousand lectures glorifying him? And then if we look at his life, we'll find some things. Well, they weren't so glory. They weren't so much worthy of glorification either. And you can only glorify Einstein in a certain way. Okay, he was he was a brilliant scientist. Apparently, he made some major blunder also uh, <clears throat> in not accepting the implications of quantum physics. Uh, and okay, he had some good things. He was. He was philosopher of sorts and he was a pacifist of sorts and this and that but okay but it's 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 only in a very small sphere that his qualities are there I, I am not on an Einstein bashing trip here but I'm just making the point that someone who is his memory is highly respected at least in the Western world among more educated people, or maybe just among people in general, the icon, the iconic face of Albert Einstein with his uh, unusual hairstyle. People recognize that face for the photo of his face. He's gone. We don't know where he is. Where is he? We don't know. He's gone to another place in another body taken another birth somewhere. Maybe he's taken several births by now. We don't know. But the, the point I'm making, even if, just like in England, we glorify all oh, great personalities, Nelson, Wellington, Churchill, all military, all, all glorified for their military contributions. But uh, to give us... You wouldn't give a thousand talks. You can't go. You, you just can't be so enthusiastic about anyone in this world. I, I, you can't be that enthusiastic about anyone in this world that you want to talk on and on and on and on about them. But we can, should, and must about Krishna. Machita madgata prana bodhayanta parasparam katayantas chamang nityang tushyanticha ramanticha. Those who are actually devotees, who have realized his glories, who who can understand. Ahamsa rasya prabhava matasa vang pravatate iti madva bhajante vang buddha bhava samanvita. Intelligent people who understand Krishna is the source of everything. Everything emanates from him. They wholeheartedly worship Krishna and discuss among themselves, taking great pleasure in enlightening each other about him. Their Krishna is their all in all. Their life has gone to their their life has gone to him. In other words, they've surrendered their life. So this is, we should go on discussing the Lord of the worlds, the Lord of the devotees, the Lord of everyone, the Lord of everything, Krishna, Lokanatha. May he bless us all. Vancha kalpa tarubhyas charkipa sindhubya evacha patita nam pavanebhyo vaishnavebhyo namo namaha Dante nitaya chunakang padaya nipatya kritva chaka kushatame tadaham bravimi he sadava sakala eva vihaya durad gauranga chandra charane kurutanu raga parivada tu jano yata tatava nanu mokarona vayang vichara yamaha Hari rasa madira madati matta bhuvi vilu thama natama nirvishama.